Hello Booktube, I'm Jonathan and welcome to Words in Time. Now in today's video I'm going to be talking about Dragon's Egg by Robert L. Forward. Now I haven't seen a lot of people talk about this book, but a couple of things that I had heard was that it has a similar premise to Children of Time by Adrian Tchaikovsky, and that's one of my favourite books ever, and that this is a hard sci-fi novel. So after having read it, my reaction to those two thoughts are yes somewhat, and yes, definitely. So let's get into the premise. The premise of Dragon's Egg is that there is a neutron star with a surface gravity that is 67 billion times that of Earth. And on this neutron star, a plant-like organism starts to evolve into an intelligent species. Now, human astronomers discover this neutron star, so they send out an expedition to go explore it. So, that's what I think the premise is. Uh, the blurb on the back of the book is a little bit different from that, and I don't disagree with anything that the blurb says, it's just that I don't think it's so much describing the premise as it is the ending. Most blurbs will kind of describe the first 30% of a book. The blurb for this describes the last 30% of the book, and I don't think that's too much of a problem because the I think this book focuses more on the ideas than the plot, so if you have read the blurb, don't worry too much, I don't think it spoiled the book for you. Uh, but that's just a little bit of an interesting tidbit for you and uh, some advice if you want to go in cold, don't read the blurb. <laughs> so the first thing I wanted to talk about was the writing, because probably the most distinct aspect of this book is the writing. It is some hard sci-fi. If you're looking for a book that puts the science in science fiction, this could be a book that you are looking for. Uh, Robert L. Forward was an actual physicist before he started writing, and that definitely comes across in the book. I will, I want to give you an example, I want to flick through, see if I can, see if I can find something, just to give you, give you a little bit of a taste of the science, and you can see what you think. Uh, let's see, okay. The first thing I want to do is to increase the low frequency radio data digitalization rate to its maximum, she said. Then after a week of high-rate data collection, I want to have the data taken alternately with the four antennas, each one taking data for one minute at a time. After that, I want to have the X-ray telescope reactivated. It has a one degree field of view, and I want it to scan between those two angles at a rate of one degree per day. So, there you go. It's, that's just a little example, a little taste. It's certainly not incomprehensible, uh, but if you read, heard that and thought, that sounds kind of interesting, then you're going to like this book. If you read, heard that and thought, mm, that seemed a little dry, then a good portion of this book is going to come across as pretty dry. So I think your enjoyment of the technical descriptions is, is purely going to be up to your personal preference. Um, outside of the science, however, I would say that this book is still quite readable. Um, considering Forward was primarily a scientist and not a writer, uh, I thought his prose was pretty solid. Um, definitely not remarkable, but I thought it was adequate enough uh, to tell the story that he wanted to tell. So in terms of the ideas, the main idea, the main focus of this book is the evolution of the Chila. And something that was quite interesting to me was the parallels that you could draw between the evolution of the Chila and human history. We get to see them develop language, culture, religion, technology, but there are also differences, ways that we could uh, contrast them, things that made them unique because of their specific environment and their specific biology that was very, very different to humans. So. I think this is probably why this book gets compared to Children of Time, because uh, the way that we see the spiders evolve in that story, uh, there are some similarities as to the way the Chila uh, evolve in Dragon's Egg. However, in terms of the characters, I don't think it was quite as successful as Children of Time. There were a few unique characters, uh, a few memorable ones, but I didn't overly get attached to any of them in particular. And I think that was mainly as a result of we didn't really have the time uh, to explore them in any particular depth, uh, just due to the nature of time progression, how that works within the novel. Also, the human characters are very thin in this. Uh, we probably spend, if I had to guess, around 80% of our time with the Chila and around 20% of our time with the humans. So uh, that just isn't really enough time to develop any substantial uh, character arcs for the human characters in the book. However, 
I was glad that the humans were included in the story because that gave us a great opportunity to compare and contrast uh, the science and the societies of the Chila and the humans. The way that they experience gravity and time is incredibly different. The scales at which uh, things occur, things progress in the book is kind of mind boggling. And as that kind of ramps up, that kind of comes to a head in the final third of that book, that's when it started to, to really grab my attention. I think the ending of this is definitely the strongest aspect of the book. Um, so I was, in, I was glad that uh, Robert L. Forward decided to, to structure the narrative that way because it does pay off uh, at the very end. And even if it didn't hit super hard emotionally, it was rather thought provoking. I did kind of mull over the ending of this book for quite some time after having finished it. Now there were two minor oddities in the book that I wanted to talk about. There is a stage, a point at which of which the Chila's evolution um, where they have language, they are able to communicate, they have somewhat of a, a culture, a hierarchy, protocols, things like that, but they can only count up to the number three. One, two, three, and then they don't even really have a conceptual understanding of numbers beyond that. And for a book that really focuses on details, that one didn't particularly ring true to me. Uh, I'm definitely not an expert, but if I had to guess, at the evolution of language in a culture, at the point at which they are that developed, you would probably have counting. Not necessarily advanced mathematics or anything like that, but just the ability to count numbers one through 10 seemed like they would have developed that at that point, but I don't know. If you guys are experts in language, history, anthropology, anything like that, uh, get down in the comments and let me know. Uh, I'm interested to hear your thoughts on that one. And the second one, Again, not really a, a major issue at all, but just something that I thought was a little quirky, was that the Chila have a word for dragon. So the neutron star is referred to as dragon's egg because of where it is in relation to a constellation. But there's no dragons on dragon's egg. Like why did the Chila have a word for dragon? Like obviously they don't speak English. This is a you know, a third person translation of what the Chila are thinking and saying in English. But it makes sense that they would also have a word for universal things like rock or stick or food. But why do they have a word for dragon? Like, dragons are a uniquely earth concept, creation. I mean, unless the Chila independently came up with the idea of a dragon as well, that's pretty crazy, but that seems a little unlikely. Um, so if you've read the book and I've missed something, let me know. Uh, someone clarify that for me. A completely insignificant uh, aspect of the novel that for some reason I couldn't stop thinking about. Uh, so there you go. So what are my overall thoughts on Dragon's Egg? Well, to be honest, around half the time I was somewhat interested and around half the time I was somewhat bored. I will say, however, that I really enjoyed the ending. I thought that definitely brought it up a notch and now I understand why they decided to put that description in the blurb because it is the strongest aspect of the novel and definitely the best way to bring people in. So putting that into a rating, I'm gonna give Dragon's Egg a 6.5 out of 10. I think the comparisons to Children of Time make some sense. I think it focuses a little bit less on the plot and the characters, but really dives into the exploration of the evolution. So. If that sounds interesting to you, uh, this could be a 10 out of 10 for you, but if not, I could also see people DNFing this book within 30 pages. So that was just my take on it. I wanted to put that out there for you so you guys can make a decision based on your preferences. I'm sure there's some of you out there that have read some crazy stuff like Greg Egan that will not think that this is that hard at all, but just want to let you guys know uh, that was my take on Dragon's Egg. So. I hope you enjoyed the video guys. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe because as always, there's more sci-fi content coming soon.